Hey VC, so this is going to be the big classical and jazz update I was telling you guys about. It's mostly jazz, there's really just, I just bought two classical records, which is really weird for me because um, a lot of the collecting I did in the last year was very heavy in the classical, but I've kind of slowed down in that because I, I've really gotten into jazz lately and I'm just, just my jazz collection is, is almost nothing so far. Um, so I've been buying a lot of jazz and also I've been trying to get a hold of a lot of Music Matters pressings because I know... If, if they're not winding down, if, if the rumors aren't true and they're going to keep pressing, well, they're obviously not going to repress their old titles, and a lot of these are going, going, gone. So I, f I figure, you know, it's the last time they're ever going to open up the vaults to the tapes. I really just got to go for it and pick up as many of these that, that are uh, records that I would eventually want as possible. So, And keep in mind, this is collecting over the course of about five or six months really um, so it's yeah it's a lot of records but I'm gonna try to get through them as quickly as possible starting with the classical um, first we have uh, Heifetz playing the Prokofiev and the Mendelssohn violin concertos this is uh, analog productions reissue of the original um, RCA living stereo series this is a their, their original series this is one of the last ones I picked up from that original RCA series um, for those of you that are into classical um, this Analog Productions reissue series they're doing of the RCA Living Stereo catalog uh, in, in classical, I think it's some of the best sounding records I own. These are incredible both recordings, performances, and reissues. I mean, they really did a great job with these. Um, every single one I own is a favorite of mine. They did 25 most of which are war horses of the classical catalog. A lot of big orchestral stuff Reiner did with the Chicago Symphony. Some of the French, you know, Ravel, Debussy stuff that Munch did with Boston. And of course, Heifetz has a bunch of recordings on here, as do some other famous soloists. Um, I have almost all of the original 25 analog productions did. I'm missing um, the... Uh, I'm missing, like, two of the violin concerto albums just because... I mean, the, yes, they sound amazing and they're great performances, but but I'm an oboist. I, I, the, the big orchestral pieces interest me much more than a violin concerto, which probably... I, I think the the Lalo um, is one of them that I'm missing, and I, I think there's an oboe part in that, but I mean, there's there's like nothing. Like They, they just sit there, really. It's just beautiful violin playing, which is great, but it's not high in my priority list of stuff I'm collecting um, as a classical listener just because of the instrument that I play. Um, however, you know, the Mendelssohn and the Prokofiev Violin Concerto are just concert staples, and this is probably the best recording of them you can possibly get. Um, so if you're, if you're a classical fan at all, and you have a system that can take on these recordings, definitely pick them up. Um, these, when, when Analog Productions started doing this series, these are basically what got me into, into um, audiophile classical collecting. Next, we have um, another Analog Productions classical reissue. This is actually from the new series that they just started doing of RCA Living Stereo recordings that were done by the DECA team in Europe. So this is, uh, this is one that's actually quite famous among audiophiles. This is um, ballet music from Gnodes Faust and uh, Car uh, Bizet's Carmen, conducted by Alexander Gibson in the Royal Opera of Covent Garden. And this record is actually, um, I'm actually really glad they reissued this because it's quite rare. The original sell for um, in the hundreds at least, and definitely the classic records reissues are in the many hundreds of dollars. It, they're quite expensive, so I'm really glad this is back in print because it's, not only is it is it good music, I mean it is light classical, it's 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 a suite. It's, it's, two, ball uh, it's two opera suites, so it's not, it's not, you know, this isn't a Shostakovich symphony, but um, in, in terms of audio, it's it's actually phenomenal. I mean, the the bass and the impact and the dynamics on this record are legendary. It's it's one of the best sounding recordings ever made, and the Decca team did a really good job with it. So I'm glad Analog Productions decided to do this as early on as part of their series. Now, um, their new series, I think they're doing another twenty five of the the Decca recorded RCAs. And I'm probably not going to pick up all of them like I did the uh, the original series of RCAs they did, just because the new the the new ones that they're doing that Decca catalog is really heavy with kind of light classical, um, a lot of overtures, a lot of showpieces, not a lot of 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 really 
uh, war horse symphonies or or other you know some of the more serious recordings that were reissued in the in the first 25 aren't um the stuff that's going on now is 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 going to be lighter crowd pleasing classical and uh i just don't really want to listen to a lot of that there might be a couple i pick up the the um the one that's coming out of Ansermay conducting uh some uh ballet recordings is actually quite famous and very rare so i should probably pick that one up but i there weren't really many others that caught my eye enough blabbering about classical i could talk about classical uh audiophile nonsense all day on to the jazz and it's going to be a lot of music matters i just bought a lot of music matters this year um this one i've been hunting down for a very long time this is the only one i've ever had to buy used um although it was sealed so whatever this is uh art blakey and the jazz messengers night in tunisia the music matters double 45 pressing a lot of people have said a lot of things about this record so i'm not going to drone on too much but it sounds incredible it's a great performance um it was definitely one of the one of the ones on my want list for the longest time so i'm happy i have it more art blakey i really like art blakey by the way he's one of my favorite blue note artists this is uh mosaic uh double double 45 music matters i'm just i'm gonna try to go quickly uh, last art Blakey for today, uh, Indestructible. Um, I hadn't actually heard this one, so I, I listened to it. I went and listened to it online, and man, it's it's uh, it's some of the more avant-garde stuff the Jazz Messengers have done. Um, again, Music Matters, Double Forty Five. Uh, another one of my favorite Music Matter, uh, one of my favorite Bluna artists, also Music Matters artists, is uh, Wayne Shorter. This is Night Dreamer. This one was uh, getting low in stock on the Music Matters website, so I swept this up quick. Um, the only the only Wayne Shorter album I'm missing now is Juju. I still need to get Juju, but another time. Here's another one that was uh, very low stock on the website. I'm glad I bought it before they hiked up the price like crazy. This is uh, Horace Silver's Song for My Father. This is also a really famous jazz record. Um, one of Blue Note's biggest sellers, I think, of all time. And very iconic, so I'm glad it's in the collection. Um, I don't listen to enough Horace Silver. I need to listen to more Horace Silver. And again, Music Matters Double 45. This is another one that also recently, I think, is no longer available. I'm, I'm glad I snagged it before, both before it went out of stock and before the price got hiked up again. Um, this is Hank Mobley's Soul Station. Again, one of the really, really big blue notes that I was missing from my collection. Um, this is the 33 RPM version on Music Matters, of course. Uh, another one that is now no longer available pretty much anywhere. Um, Search for a New Land, Lee Morgan. Um, this is probably Lee Morgan's most avant-garde album, and of course I really enjoy the avant-garde jazz. That's not too ridiculous, you know. I don't, I, I don't enjoy the stuff that's, that's too, that's out there for the sake of being out there. But I love that period of the late '60s where people were really stepping outside the box and experimenting with new cool sounds within uh the con within some actual structure of formal jazz um i think that's when jazz yielded the coolest stuff this isn't late 60s this is actually early 60s i think yeah 1964 so it's not that late along in the 60s but still um he did some incredible stuff for the time now onto one of my favorite saxophone players probably actually my favorite saxophone player this is um Sonny Rollins, Volume 1. Um, I just love Sonny Rollins. Um, what was it? One of my friends, uh, Mary, back in Montreal, was saying, you know, she's talking about Sonny Rollins, and, and she's a bassoonist, and so we're, we're approaching this as wind players. And one thing Sonny Rollins does really well is he just produces this really sturdy, supported tone. Um, you know, I, I think no one's would argue that, you know, John Coltrane might have done some more innovative things in terms of harmonies and structure of jazz and no one i mean his impact as a saxophonist is 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 still with us today in that regard and sonny rollins wasn't quite as adventurous in that way but his technique as a player was just insane um he was just it was like a column of air um so as a as a wind player it's really interesting to listen to someone just um kind of support and, and just blow like that uh so yeah sunny rollins volume one blue note double 45 music matters 
more Sonny Rollins. Uh, this is an Analog Productions one. This is Sonny Rollins' Tenor Madness featuring John Coltrane, um, which really does make it Tenor Madness. I had never, uh, I'd never listened to this before, and I saw um, Acoustic Sounds was doing uh, the Prestige series. And, you know, I'll always buy Sonny Rollins. I just, I love Sonny Rollins. Again, more Sonny Rollins. This is one that Music Matters originally said they were going to do. And then apparently the tape was actually damaged in some way. That's what people are saying. Um, so it never got put in the Music Matters series. So I have here the classic records version. This is Sonny Rollins' Night at the Village Vanguard. Um, a really great live recording. Not the highest fidelity because it's a live recording, but the music is, is outstanding. And, you know, Sonny Rollins. Uh, changing it up a bit, this is uh, some Miles Davis. This is the Analog Productions Double 45 of Someday My Prince Will Come. This is a really famous tune that a lot of people have done. Um, I think Bill Evans probably had the most famous version, but um, Miles had his own take on it. And, you know, I'm always looking to fill my Miles catalog because I, I, you know, it's not just because he's Miles Davis. I do really enjoy most of his music, at least up through Bitches Brew. I don't really enjoy the stuff he did after Bitches Brew. But all the stuff he did in the 60s was just is incredible. It's essential listening, and it tracks the progress of jazz perfectly. Um, and this is just a really fun, beautiful album that he did that's, that's um, it's just some really awestruck trumpet playing and uh, some great arrangements. And here's one that uh, I had in a really bad. Pr I had a really bad pressing of this record um, on I think I like Wax Time that I picked up at a half price books, and I'm really excited that now I have one that actually sounds good. This is Dave Brubeck's Time Out Analog Productions. This is the 33 33 RPM version. They did both a 45 and a 33. And if you're going to put both out, I'm, I'm just going to buy the 33. I mean, I'm sure the 45 sounds a little better, but I'm just happy to have a really good sounding copy from the analog tapes. You know, I, I'm not going to split hairs about about the speed if, if the mastering is the same and the source is good. Almost done. What is this? This is, oh, yeah. I actually, I got this on my last day, or uh, one of, no, second to last day in Montreal. I had some, some cash on me, and I, I went, you know, I had to go to um, our 33 tour and look in the jazz section. And I got uh, Ornette Coleman. This is our music. This is uh, ORG, ORG Music, I believe, or Original Recording Group. I always get the two confused, um, but a double 45 from them. Um, this is the third double 45 Ornette Coleman album I have, because I have the uh, Shape of Jazz to Come and Free Jazz pressings they did, which sound phenomenal. So I already knew this was going to sound really good. And I like Ornette Coleman because he's out there. Um, he's out there, but it's still it's still uh, really solid technical playing. Speaking of really solid technical playing in a revolutionary album, uh, this is the uh, Rhino reissue of John Coltrane's Giant Steps. It's the... I know it's the... Uh, 33 RPM single disc version. The uh, 45 is out of print, and it's like going for like $100 now. I'm not going to pay that much for a copy of Giant Steps. This one was mastered from the original analog tapes, so I hear. And uh, I haven't listened to it yet, but it's a legendary album. It's probably Coltrane's most famous album, I think, you know, give or take with Blue Train. But definitely the one that kind of ushered in the 60s in jazz. Uh, more John Coltrane. I actually stumbled across this record by chance. I uh, I was waiting uh, waiting to get my tattoo done last week, and uh, I had some time to kill, so I went into a record store across the street. That you know, I'd, I'd been in there a few times before. They don't have anything special, any crazy audio file pressings. Just a, a record store that kind of focuses on like '60s and '70s music. But uh, I found this, uh, this 70s impulse reissue of John Coltrane's Impressions in there, um, really cheap, and it's really clean. It's not, it, it's one of the early, I think this was like a 1972 pressing, so it's a, it's a reissue from the original, but, it's, but it still sounds good. It's not, I know the impulse label kind of went downhill after the mid-70s, and some of the late 70s pressings of, of impulse titles sound really bad. But from what I could gather, this sounds almost as good as the original. And it was it cost me almost nothing. So always looking to add to my Coltrane collection. 
uh, another artist. Wow, we're back to uh, back to Art Blakey again. This is a Speaker's Corner reissue of Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers on Impulse. This is the one Impulse record they did. Um, I know Analog Productions did a version of this too, but Speaker's Corner is also from the analog tapes and it was cheaper. And uh, I'm just trying to collect as much Art Blakey as I can. So um, again, haven't listened to it yet. I'm sure it sounds amazing. It is all Rudy Van Gelder? Rec I think that was Rudy Van Gelder recorded. I'm assuming. I think he also did work with Impulse Jazz Nerds. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, these last three I picked up today when I was out. I, I went out and sold some records to End of an Ear, and then I hopped over to Waterloo because I know Waterloo carries some audiophile jazz titles, and I was not disappointed. Here is the uh, Analog Productions reissue. I haven't even cleaned it, taken it out of the packaging yet. This is the Analog Productions reissue of Relaxin' with the Miles Davis Quartet on Prestige. Quintet, excuse me. Sorry, excuse me, jazz gods. Relaxing with the Miles Davis Quintet. This is, uh, I, I, I know he did a, this is, this, Workin', Steamin', and one other, we're all, uh, and Cookin'. I think we're all from this one session he did in the mid-50s. And this got released later. I think this got released in 58, but I think it's from a couple years before. And these sessions are, are really classic Miles Davis uh, bop era. And I think Coltrane plays on this. Yeah, Coltrane does play on this. Analog Productions, Miles Davis, can't go wrong. And uh, I also picked up two more Music Matters pressings at Waterloo at this uh, at Waterloo today. Again, haven't even taken them out of the wrapping yet. This is a uh, Stanley Turrentine uh, Blue Blue Hour with the three sounds. This is one that I've heard people talk a lot about on the online forums because it was kind of a shock that Music Matters chose to reissue this. I know this is a really bluesy record. I don't know much more about that beyond it, but um, I'm excited to listen to it because a lot of people seem to really like this. And last one. This is, uh, this is one that a lot of people really, really love, and I, I admit I'm not the world's biggest classical guitar, fan, uh, classical guitar fan. I'm not the world's biggest jazz guitar fan. Um, it, I, it sounds, some of it can sound, a lot of it can sound like elevator music to me. However, I heard so much about this record, and I listened to it, and I kind of got into it, um, and I've heard it just, this pressing just sounds incredible. It's one of the best music matters that they've ever done. I got, a, I had to pick up uh, the 33 RPM pressing of Kenny Burrell's Midnight Blue. I, I just had to. Too many people have said too many good things about this version. Um, and I think it's actually sold out online. Waterloo had it. They had a couple copies actually, but from what I from what I've seen on the Music Matters website, I think this is this is totally done now. So I'm glad I got it at the regular retail price and didn't have to go to eBay for it. All right, that was a lot of jazz, VC. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. I know it was kind of a long video. Um, soon, in a couple days, I'll try to give a video recap of some of the more contemporary rock punk. You know, all the normal modern pressings of somewhat modern music that I also picked up. Um, that's also going to be a long video too, so it'll take me a while to, to do. Um, but thanks for watching. See you next time, BC.